Namaste, crypto affectionados. This is Capital Show. And guys, today we have Fernando Gutierrez with us. Okay, guys. So um, I found him on Twitter and I found him to be really uh, summarizing all the cryptos that I wanted, like, for example, Torchain and Luna that I wanted to understand about without really going so deep inside. And But I wanted to have an idea of those cryptos. And uh, I found him and I found him uh, very easy to understand, you know. So today our conversation, I'm going to ask him a few questions. And uh, because he's in the middle of the crypto, um, uh, what you call it, um, he's right in the middle of the crypto ecosystem. And it'll be great to find out more uh, about crypto from him. So thank you, uh, Fernando, for coming in. How are you doing today? Thank you for having me. I'm doing great. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. So I just want to start off uh, to ask you about your a bit of your background and uh, how you came into crypto. Yeah, I'm uh, an entrepreneur. I had uh, several businesses in the past. Uh, most of them lately or uh, right before crypto were in real estate. Um, I, inv I invested in um, in different projects with my own money, with third party money, sometimes institutional, sometimes sub-institutional. Sub um, but I, uh, I've been involved in video games, healthcare, and a number of other um, sectors. So uh, in 2012, uh, I listened to a podcast uh, where uh, Gavin Anderson was interviewed. This was the second developer in, in Bitcoin, he was more public uh, facing, uh, Satoshi had already disappeared by then, uh, but I listened to an interview with him and I loved the idea. So as soon as I got home, I started doing some research on Bitcoin. Uh, back then it was very difficult to buy. Um, so by the time I had my Mt. Gox exchange, exchange account uh, set up, um, the price had gone from nine to fourteen dollars, or something like that. And I was like, "Whoa, such a bubble! I'm not gonna buy at fourteen. That's crazy." So a few days after that, it was like twenty-five. And I was like, "This is gonna burst." Whenever it goes back to ten, I'll be buying. It kept going up until I don't know, maybe a hundred. And and at that point, it was so painful that I I disconnected a little from the space and. Then year after that, I was like, hey, you love the idea. You liked what you heard, what you read. Um, so what if you are not super early and you don't make a huge fortune because you are super, you're buying super cheap. Get in, have fun and, and see how it goes. Maybe you right. may be able to start a new business, you know, and the gold rust, the one that made more money in the end was Levi Strauss, not the gold diggers. It was him selling them trousers. So it's like go have fun, enjoy. And that was 2013. We had a big pump in the market. I then discovered other cryptos. And in 13, 14, I was uh, involved with a few of them, uh, trading and selling coins on Reddit. I, I had accounts on, on exchanges and then I would uh, resell on Reddit uh, at the markup. Um, and I discovered Dash, which back then was called Darkcoin. I uh, really loved the project. I got involved and I spent uh, like six years involved until 2020. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. Well, if only you had bought Bitcoin at $9. If only you had bought at that time. Yeah, well, I, I, I've bought pretty cheap also, so I'm not going to yeah. complain. Okay, okay. In 2015, yeah. Bitcoin was at $200, even below right. that. Right. Um, right. In uh, a few years ago, it was $3,000. I mean, okay. yeah, obviously it's better to buy at a few cents, but also people, when people say, if I had bought at whatever, it's like, if yeah. you had bought at a dollar, most yeah. likely you would have already sold by the time exactly. it was a thousand. Exactly, exactly. Uh, oh. So oh. don't fantasize, don't, don't go crazy about it. Trading mm. in the past is always so easy. Truth yeah. is, I, I could have bought some Bitcoin at $9 and I didn't, yeah. Would I have bought bet the house on that? Probably not. So yeah. right. it is what it is. And uh, yeah. I think crypto space is way more than the price and making mm. a quick buck. So I, I want to encourage everyone to get involved. I mean, don't, don't think about what you're going to earn or 
whatever, just get involved, see, find your place because it's a growing economy, it's a growing industry. There's plenty of things to do. And there's plenty of, and, and if money is your thing, which obviously everyone wants to earn money, there's plenty of fortunes still to be made. Yes, great, excellent. Okay, how did you come with this idea of five tweets? And why five tweets? Yeah, um, as I said, I've been involved with crypto since a long time ago. Yeah. But um, for a few years, I was involved with Dash, which is a Bitcoin-based cryptocurrency that is a digital cash. It's a very fast, cheap, and secure, and it, it, it tries to be money, payments. It's very easy. And mm -hmm. However, I was very focused on that space, and I somehow turned a blind eye because you, you can't keep up, keep up with everything all the time. It's impossible. It's a huge right. industry. Right. Yes. So um, I had uh, some gaps in my knowledge of the ecosystem when in 2020. And when I left, I, I wanted to fill those gaps because I, want, I wanted to stay involved in the space. And I, I'm working on my own project and I needed to have some more background or some a more complete knowledge of the space in order to make a few decisions. So I started to read, but when you do things on your own, mm -hmm. uh, even if you are very disciplined, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you don't reach conclusions if you don't force yourself. So at some point I said, hey, let's make this public. That way you commit to it and you can't, uh, uh, okay. you, you, you can't really stop uh, the five, the five, and that's why I say, okay, let's do it 50 days straight. I saw someone doing something similar with uh, marketing threads. He was doing it for 30 days. And I said, okay, 30, 30 is, is, is weak. Let's go 50 because it's, it's, an, it's a nicer number. No reason. I mean, it was, and I more or less had in mind things I wanted to research and 30 was a bit short for me. So I said, let, let's, do, let's, let's do 50. And then I... I, I, I set it up at five tweets because I wanted it to be easy to read and fast. Um, I didn't want to go into th 20 tweets, threads that are heavy to read. And I was like, hey, just a quick thing. Then if you're interested, you need to do more research. This is not meant to be your only source of information. It's, right, it's right. a way to filter quickly and right. have the, the gist of it and maybe, hey, this is not interesting to me. Yeah. Discard it or hey, it, I like it. Let's go deeper. It's um, and and then five tweets uh, work well for that. Also, when you summarize a lot, mm. uh, you really need to force you to understand stuff. When you are going longer, the temptation to uh, just use concepts that you don't fully understand, it's easier because, uh, I mean, it, I think. The, probably misattributed, but there is a quote, I think it's by Mark Twain. Uh, I mean, all, all, all good quotes are usually attributed to Winston Churchill or Mark Twain. <laughs> so I don't know if it's his really or not, but they say he started a letter apologizing for writing a long letter because I didn't have time to, so to write a short one. Uh, summarizing, it's, it's harder. And I, I thought harder. that if I was forced to summarize so much, I would go deeper. and it doesn't allow you to leave areas of the project ununderstood because mm -hmm. you, you really need to understand to summarize. And my notes are longer. I sometimes go deeper on things that interest me. Um, mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I, I, I said that standard five felt like a beautiful number. Um, and yeah, there was no more reasoning behind that than that. It's an exercise for myself which I serve for accountability. So I'm not really doing anything crazy in terms of trying to get engagement or chasing audiences or, or anything. I, I serve in a few places, of course. I also um, paste them with some extras and links in my newsletter um, because, I mean, you are already writing it, so you, you might as well distribute it a little and having an audience is always nice. But the, these 50 days is an exercise for me to fill some gaps. That's why also I'm not covering some of the big projects because I already know them. And, and mm. then yeah, I can do it because it's useful for other people. But this was first my, uh, my study challenge. Mm. 
Um, then when it's done, I, I want to keep writing because I enjoy writing and, and researching. Um, probably then I'll go deeper with fewer things. And uh, maybe I won't do a thread and an email a day and I do a couple of them, but they are longer. Or maybe a week I do one and another week I do three. I, I don't want it to keep sort of structure. I just want to uh, do the things that are interesting to me. And also uh, probably some of those will uh, go to the areas of the project I'm working on. Uh, because um, obviously, yeah, I mean, uh, there are things that interest me more than others. Which is the most uh, difficult project, crypto project to understand that took you very long to, you know, read, read, like, you know, to really get your, to wrap your head around that. Was there anything like that? Uh, I don't know, because sometimes you understand very well and very quickly a project, yeah. but yeah. because you... Yeah study the previous project. So yeah. I remember um, when I was um, preparing to cover uh, Polkadot, um, Solana, and um, a few others, I, I read a very long detailed article, wonderful article uh, about the differences between these protocols. So, uh, and I think I, I covered Polkadot first, although I could be wrong or and Cosmos, and I mean, I think it was Cosmos, Polkadot, and Solana, I, I, I prepare more or less in parallel because they have many similarities and also Ethereum 2.0. So um, yeah, I think the first one was Polkadot. So I'll say maybe this is, this is oh, the, the most difficult one, but in reality, they are both equally difficult to grasp uh, if you have not in, been involved. Then there are other smaller projects that may be complex, but sometimes it's because their documentation sucks. Um, mm. It's a huge difference. Uh, there are some yeah. projects that have wonderful documentation yeah. and others that have terrible ones. Yeah. Um, also, there are projects that I lose interest quick. So I just do the five tweets and I'll right. be done because I say this is not something I'm interested in. Uh, I have enough of it. And others then I keep reading even if I have my, have to, my five tweets done. So it's not apple to apple comparisons. Cool. There are some threads that maybe took me an hour and others that took me four. All this, I already knew most of it. So you just check a couple of things and, yeah. uh, that you okay. wanted to check. Okay, great. So you were mentioning that you came into Bitcoin way back in 2012. Where is Bitcoin heading to this year in uh, 2021, in December? From now till December, what do you see Bitcoin doing? That's a difficult question uh, okay. that if I had proper answers, um, okay. uh, I'd, I'd be retired <laughs> in an island. Uh, but, um, well, I see, when, when, when I talk Bitcoin or any other project, I mm -hmm. usually separate two things. One thing is mm -hmm. the, the technology, the adoption, and what's happening with what's going on with the project, and then the price. And mm -hmm. those two are, are usually completely disconnected. Well, not completely disconnected, but they, there is some disconnection. And in the earlier part of the year, when things, when the market was very bullish, any small piece of news would uh, rally the market 20%. Right. Now that it's a bit more berries, a country adopts Bitcoin as legal tender and the market- Exactly. I don't understand. So, I thought that news would really turn things around. I thought at least something would happen. But it didn't. Yeah. No, uh, the market doesn't move on the news. I mean, they help and the fundamentals help, but reality is there are bigger forces, and, mm -hmm. uh, capital flows. And now that Bitcoin is very intertwined with the traditional financial system, then mm -hmm. stocks crashes, the stock market crashes, uh, a hedge fund needs to reduce their uh, risk exposure and they sell some Bitcoin. So it's like, what does that have to do with adoption? Nothing, but it is what it is. That that's reality. So in terms of adoption, I I think we are not going to see many new things. I mean, the big news is uh, El Salvador, but that's going to take a while. I mean, um, until businesses start familiarizing themselves, uh, citizens, and all that, and then maybe and it's just one other. It's not the only legal tender. The USD. The US dollar is still legal tender, so it yeah. does. It's not forced uh, into adoption, although there are some enforcements in the law that are maybe questionable. But um, 
in terms of adoption, I see um, some growth, but nothing crazy uh, this year. Again, in adoption, you have to separate into people that use Bitcoin as money and people who use Bitcoin as a store of value or a new investment class that uh, defends you from inflation. They are related, but they are not the same. That part of the pie is probably growing more than uh, Bitcoin as money because Bitcoin as money depends a lot on Lightning Network and it doesn't really work very well yet. That's why uh, the project I was involved with, uh, Dash, has a lot of adoption in Venezuela, for example, because you can have very quick and cheap transactions um, that you can't do with um, with Bitcoin, but you can with that. So I, I don't think we're going to see a lot of new things in the in that side of uh, of, of the camp. On the yeah. other side, on on the on the store of value and uh, inflation hedge, it will depend a lot on the economy and and how things are going. A lot of people are very afraid of a, a stock market crash. If that happened, I would be worried about Bitcoin and uh, adoption by institutionals because they will need to cut down their risks. Uh, on the other hand, if there is a lot of inflation, that's where Bitcoin should shine. So yes. who knows? Um, yeah. But I would say when things go wrong, most people will cut risks. So if the economy go, tanks, I would be worried. If the economy goes well and governments keep printing money like there is no tomorrow, yeah. um, I'm optimistic about the second half of the year. I think uh, in terms of price, it's uh, stood quite firmly uh, on the 30,000 range with a couple uh, uh, trips to the 28,000, I believe, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it it's, hold, it's holding it's holding quite well on the 31, 32, yeah. 32 range. So I hope that as soon as all these people, I mean, all the people that need to go out, uh, finish that process and uh, some new demand is created when the price crashes also, it scares a lot of people, although it should not be this, that the case. Yeah. Uh, because now they are cheaper. Why would you want to buy when it's going up um, yeah. and not when it goes down? But truth is, uh, that's how it is. So usually when we see a big crash, you need to leave some time until people recover from, from the panic to start buying again. But again, I'm optimistic about the second half of the year. I don't know where to go in terms of price. Uh, I think it's it's doing great even in the thirty thousand something. Mm -hmm. uh, it's 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 better than how we started the year. I would say that uh, I, I don't expect big corrections either. People, some people talk twenty thousand, eighteen thousand. Yeah. I think, but every, anything could happen. I mean, I, I've stopped predicting the price. Uh, I of course trade with, um, with my own coins and have my own ideas, but uh, I never tell people what to do because uh, I don't know what's gonna happen. And I've done well for myself, but I don't want that responsibility. Great, great. great. Um, what are your favorite coins other than Bitcoin? Um, you mentioned Dash. What are you holding? What are you buying currently? Well, I'm, I, I have a few. I mean, besides Bitcoin, I have Bitcoin because it's uh, it's the most stable thing in in this industry. Um, but reality is everything moves more or less the same or in the same direction. But then altcoins are like leverage Bitcoin. Usually they go up more and they go down more. So um, Bitcoin for me is like the stable coin. And then you move in and out of all this stuff. But I also have... Same, same thing with Ethereum. Um, I have Ethereum. I respect the project a lot. It has a lot of uses. The network is clogged right now. It's terrible. Uh, fees are uh, disgusting. <laughs> but um, but it's it's an awesome project. So I keep those two. I also have Dash. I've been involved with it a lot of time. Mm -hmm. I think there is room for one coin optimized to be money. And that's the one, in, in my opinion. Um, and then I have a few other smaller uh, positions. Um, I'm very optimistic on Solana, for example. I like how it scales. I like the things it can do, the language uh, it uses. Uh, it's very well respected by uh, uh, coders. 
um, and I see a very solid project doing uh, very well. I like Cosmos, uh, also it's super open, the ethos behind the project, I love it. Um, I like Thorchain, you mentioned before, uh, I discovered it recently and I love the idea. I don't yeah. know about the token, I hold some, but um, yeah. um, the idea of a decentralized exchange cross blockchain, that's amazing. Um, I also like uh, gaming. As I said, I had a, a, a gaming company. It was uh, very difficult uh, back in the day uh, to uh, keep that open because games are have a terrible um, business model because you have all the cost up front mm -hmm. and, and then you need to recover uh, after that. Yeah. Uh, so in the end, we, we ended up closing the studio, but we had a couple games and a couple decent runs. And gaming has always interested me. And in that space, I loved uh, Axie, Axie Infinity. It's uh, uh, similar to uh, Crypto Kittens, but way richer. Um, it, you can um, play with these small monsters and breed them and do a lot of stuff. But then there there is a marketplace and you can sell things there and it's really creating a big economy that uh, Axie Infinity marketplace there are millions of dollars transacted every day and there's a lot of people in certain markets where uh, people maybe earn less and have fewer opportunities and they breed these creatures they sell them in the, in the marketplace people are paying for them and it's creating a really impressive um, ecosystem I also like in that space engine um, it's a uh, it's a great project. Um, I have a few more. I mean, I, I, I'm i not a purist in terms of, uh, hey, just the, these two or three top projects and everything else is crap. I, I don't agree with that. I believe the future is multi-token. But yeah. I also think that there's a lot of crap in the space. Yeah. Um, in this process where I'm analyzing uh, projects, I found some of them to be terrible. Um, and some of them to make no sense. Uh, maybe some of them I haven't really understood. Uh, today I tweeted about one and the CEO of the project just tweeted back, uh, let's have a chat so you understand or something like that. Maybe it's my fault. Maybe I, I misunderstood. That's completely fine. Right. Um, but uh, I don't see the need for many of them. I think we've, we've abused the space. I think that's also because of how incentives are set up. Um, new developer comes into space and he can choose between launching a token and maybe making a fortune or working at a, an yeah. open source, contributing for free to another project or getting a job or things like that. Mm -hmm. So I can see why someone who's entrepreneurial wants to launch their own token, but then that's, uh, that's opened the door to thousands. And, and then the whole process of um, given a very poor image of and everything that is not Bitcoin. And I think that's not fair. There are very good projects uh, that are not Bitcoin and there are also terrible ones. So, um, I mean, everyone needs to make their own research and judge by themselves. Right, right. Okay, I want to ask you, what do you think is the most centralized stable coin? Because this is... Uh, this has been debated, right? Um, a lot of stable coins that we think are really decentralized, they are not. For example, I'll give you is DAI. So the DAI stable coin is backed by, I think, 60% of USDC, right? So how stable, I mean, how decentralized is it? So according to you, what, what is the best stable coin to use that is most decentralized? Uh, that's a good question. It's it's difficult to answer because uh, some of them are very obscure and you don't see really what's going on behind. I think we've already, the market has already arrived to some kind of standard for uh, what is an algorithmic stable coin. And there are some projects uh, managing them with a, 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 with a stable coin and then an auxiliary token that they use to stabilize it. Yes. Like uh, Terra does, for example, Terra. I love. I love the Terra project. That's one I didn't mention before, but I, I really love what they're doing. Uh, Cello, I think it's pronounced, uh, does the same. Um, they, with their token and, and their um, stable coin, uh, mm -hmm. the stable coins on their system. So uh, the, the problem I have with these is that they are relatively new, so you, you never know. Uh, and a small mistake in a, small, in a smart contract can break everything. 
So I tend to prefer those that have been around for a long time. And that's why even Dai having some problems, that's one I trust a lot. Uh, because it's gone through several very bad markets yeah. and it has not broke. It, it's nope. not broken. I mean, it, it's, yeah. it's work, it didn't collapse. And that's important. The liquidation mechanisms working, even when the market tanks 30%. I mean, yeah. maybe other others will also stand, but I'm not good enough to understand the, all the contracts and all the code that uh, regulates them. So I'm a bit nervous about some of the newer ones. So again, even if a lot of USDC uh, is behind DAI, um, I, I, I would say if I had to put a lot of money into a stable coin now that was decentralized, probably I'd go with DAI. Mm. Terra I'd like because I, I also UST and the, the Terra stable coin uh, but that pegs dollar. I, even if it's more or less new, I, I really like the project and the team and I think they, they're they probably good, but um, and their ample fourth protocol and what you can do with the uh, USD there, it's uh, pretty impressive. So um, one of those two probably. Uh, but again, also, I'm not so nervous about centralized stable coins, depending on which ones. I mean, I'm nervous about um, Tether because uh, the reserves could be yeah. there or not. And there's something, there are some reserves, but we don't know the quality of those credits and things like that. So I'm a bit worried. But um, USDC and by, by Circle, um, they are, say. yeah, they're pretty well audited. They are big partners. Uh, if you are betting on the dollar anyway, mm -hmm. uh, you are already assuming risks in that system. I mean, yeah. if you are, yeah. If you invest in Bitcoin, you are betting on Bitcoin. But if you have stable coin, you are betting on uh, dollars. So you have a, the, an issuer risk. Yeah, you have with Circle. But uh, I mean, you have a dollar risk. So if you bet on that, probably the system that surrounds the dollar is going to be okay. Um, so stable coins are a hybrid. And pretending to have a stable coin that does not have any ties to the uh, fiat world. That's not possible because you are yeah. you are pegging to dollars. So you have that peg that makes you a part of the fiat world, even if you don't like it. So sure. they are interesting tool, but they are not cryptocurrency. So uh, I, 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 I don't have strong opinions on which ones I would keep my money on. I, I, I barely have any stable coins, to be honest. Okay, because I personally used I used the stable coins to um, when I when I need to pay my bills and all that. So what I will do is I will I will uh, whatever uh, altcoin that I have that has made money or if I'm staking it, I'll just change it to Dai and then send it to the exchange and convert it to uh, Sing dollars. Uh, you know, so that's what I do basically. Because now I'm full time crypto, right? So. Uh, I was looking at uh, some ways, uh, you know, also for tax purposes, will they tax my, but uh, in Singapore and I think in Switzerland, the capital gains tax, there are, there are no taxes on Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And in my case, I used to be paid in Dash and Dash is traded at most major exchanges. So I just, when I needed to, to sell, I would send to the exchange, get euros and send to my bank account that would change to Swiss francs because there, there were no good Swiss franc uh, purse, but I didn't need to jump through stable coins. I understand uh, that need with some more exotic tokens. Mm -hmm. um, so for that, they make sense as a tool to move money around, that's fine. As a yeah. savings uh, tool, I'm a bit more nervous. Yeah, yeah, great. And right. regarding taxing, by the way, most countries yeah. that do tax capital gains, which is not yeah. the case with Switzerland or Singapore, yeah. uh, if you change to a stable coin, they mm -hmm. consider that a tax event. So some people say, no, as long as you are in crypto, you are fine. And okay. that's usually not the case. I would encourage okay. everyone that's working under that assumption to mm -hmm. check it, uh, yeah. check it out with a lawyer in their jurisdiction, mm -hmm. because most countries consider changing from one token to another a tax event, and then you would have a capital gain there and right. you would need to yeah. pay for that. Uh, right. But 
again, it depends on each country and that's very specific. But I've heard that a lot. And I know in some cases that's that's not true. So people should act with caution. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. Yeah. So if you're listening to this uh, conversation, please check your country's laws and regulations on uh, stable coins and whether is it a taxable event or not. Yeah. Okay. So, um, okay. So what happens after 50 days? So you're going to go on a 50 day straight. And after 50 days, are we going to see you still summarizing all the cryptos for us? Or are you going to take a break? <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not good with breaks, okay. uh, but I'm not going to be doing daily. Hmm. Um, cause even if it's light and all that, it's, it's very taxing. I wanted to do because I'm, I, I, I'm a very, uh, binary person. I either do things or not. So for me, high intensity works very well, but you can't do that forever. So 50 days straight, no rest that, that worked for me. Um, and also the number of projects is that are interesting is limited, um, now mm. I'm already finding some that I, I don't really care about uh, when I'm doing some research. Most of the gaps I wanted to cover, I have them covered. Maybe I will review in some of the last threads, some bigger projects, just because I don't have other smaller ones that I'm interested in right now. So maybe I'll review Cardano, even if I already know it, but I think it's interesting for some people. Um, and that was not the goal of this research project, but yeah. maybe I'll do some of that um, by the end, because I think I'm at 40 something already, 42, 43. Um, so uh, maybe I'll do a couple threads uh, that are not new. Um, and also all the projects are too small and maybe uh, to, to write about them. Uh, anyway, um, after that, I'll keep writing. I want to uh, do at least a couple a week, um, but they are gonna be probably a bit longer if the topic uh, merits that, um, and we'll see how how that goes. Uh, there are many topics around bigger projects. Also, some of my threads have been about things with Bitcoin because I don't think you can write about crypto and not touch Bitcoin or Ethereum. So yeah, uh, yeah, I, I've had a bit, I've had a few threads about Bitcoin uh, that I remember now. That there was one about mining when China banned. Uh, right. crypto mining there was one about taproot which is very exciting yeah. uh, there was one about michael saylor and micro strategy because mm -hmm. they are a big player in the market now and you need to know them yeah. um there was one about the uh, grayscale bitcoin trust same mm -hmm. thing very big in the market you need to know something about them at least and, and that they hold three percent of the coins already yeah. um you need to know about rap bitcoin although that's not exactly Bitcoin, but it's yeah. between Bitcoin and DeFi. So I've been touching Bitcoin, but probably I will focus more on the projects I care about, which are mm -hmm. some of the bigger ones and some smaller ones. So yeah. I'll focus more on some of them, uh, probably go a bit deeper, and maybe some new project from time to time, maybe with a bit more depth. Um, who knows? Uh, I'll, 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 I'll keep going because I enjoy Twitter. I, I enjoy writing. It's very good for my thinking process. And, the fa and publishing, it makes me be more complete and more uh, rigorous with my uh, research. Great, great, great. So, yeah. Um, so, where do we find you? How do we connect with you? And where do we see your work and keep in touch yeah. with you? Yeah. Easiest thing is Twitter. Uh, my username is Fernando, like my name, F-E-R-N-A-N-D-O. Uh, it's very simple. In my bio, you have the link to the newsletter subscription, which is quite long, right. so not, not, not worth uh, saying it. Um, that's the easiest thing. I'll I mean, put your you, link, I'll put your yeah. link at, at the description right. box below. So if you guys want to know uh, his bio and his link, uh, it'll be all down the description box. Yeah, the newsletter has a few extras. I always add some links and sometimes yeah. some more text and concepts that I could not fit into the five tweets. So I'd say if you enjoyed, I, I'd recommend um, subscribing to the newsletter. Um, and then Twitter is more conversational, of course. And uh, I tweet other things besides that. And my DMs are open. So if anyone needs anything, yes, uh, send me a DM and it's pretty... Uh, I'm usually quite responsive. Great. 
Great. Yeah. So guys, please sign up for his newsletter. I've already signed up and I think it's good because it summarizes everything and it helps a lot. You know, if you're in the crypto space and there's so many projects out there, uh, you need something like that. I think it's really great. Right. So Fernando, thank you so much for your time. And uh, really, it was, uh, it was great having you and uh, you're more, you're welcome to come anytime to the Perfect. My thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. 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 So thanks a lot. Have a, and, uh, have a great day. You. Yeah. You too. You too. Please support me to grow my channel. Please like, share and subscribe. Thank you.